coming up, flying around an active volcano in New Zealand. See just how close the sweepstakes Super Cub is to flying again and flying a small but capable helicopter. Plus, supersonic passenger travel gets closer to reality. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Build and fly with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Redeer. Hello and welcome to AOPA Live This Week. I'm Melissa Rudinger and Tom Haynes joins us now from New Zealand. So Tom, last week you were in Queenstown on the South Island. Where the heck are you today? Well, kia ora, Melissa. We are coming to you from Ardmore on the North Island of New Zealand, just south of Auckland. And this is an airport built 1943 by the Americans uh, to uh, support and protect New Zealand and in preparation for the potential invasion of Japan. Of course, ultimately they didn't need that and the local folks had the good sense to protect this airport, turn it into a general aviation airport, and today it is the busiest airport in New Zealand with a lot of activities. You know, for a nation whose national symbol is a flightless bird, there's a lot of love for aviation here in New Zealand, love of aviation of all types and across both uh, islands, as a matter of fact. In fact, there are some 4.4 million people in New Zealand and about 7,000 general aviation pilots on a per capita basis, that means that there are about four times as many pilots here in New Zealand as there are in the United States. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Avro Anson, the Mark I, the only flying Mark I on the planet. And you can see that love for aviation throughout both islands. Every two years, the largest warbird air show in the southern hemisphere thunders over the South Island. Warbirds over Wanaka attracts thousands of Kiwis and international visitors, including folks camping along the ridgeline, Looks like the Indian's about to attack the wagon train. Weather and a minor incident limited some of the acts the first day we were there, but still it is a show to rival some of the best air shows in the United States. There's a sizable warbird community here in New Zealand. The New Zealand Warbirds Association has just opened a beautiful hangar and visitor center at Ardmore Airport. And two, that's two, warbird restoration shops with worldwide reputations are also here at Ardmore. Pioneer Aero is working on restoring Air Cobras. Well, Aspex is working on its third mosquito restoration. So why such an interest in vintage aircraft in this tiny nation? Well, there's a lot of interest in aviation, yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, I don't really know why that is. We're definitely interested in, in historical aviation. And we love, you know, anything to do with machinery and, and that kind of stuff. And this, New Zealand used to be quite heavily restricted on what you could do and what you could buy from overseas. There were a lot of sort of importation issues and uh, foreign currency was limited so the Kiwis had to get on and repair things and fix things that in other countries you'd just scrap it and buy another one. So there's a bit of a sort of you know can do kind of fix it attitude that's mm -hmm. filtered down from our you know ancestors I guess. And so. We'll have more on this mosquito project in a future show. New Zealand is kind of a paradise for general aviation pilots. Not to say that there aren't a few things that perhaps some of us wouldn't like. For example, see that tower over there? It's not really an air traffic control tower anymore. Nope, there's a guy in there who sits there and records registration numbers every day, all day long, so that he can send you a bill for every takeoff and landing that you do here. And of course, there's a lot of other fees in New Zealand associated with flying, many of them that we don't have in the United States, fortunately, which is something obviously we've been fighting to prevent uh, those user fees coming in. But it is a great place to fly without a, without a doubt, and hopefully some of you will get a chance to come down and experience it at some point, because it's not that hard to do. It was fantastic. I had no idea the, the mountain uh, terrain was so vast in, in New Zealand. I th I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting as much as it is. And uh, diversity between the south and the, and the north uh, is un unbelievable. And, and in my opinion, the only way to see New Zealand for the first time is to fly around it. New Zealand is truly a country best seen from the air. Beautiful coastlines, rugged mountains, volcanoes, rolling pasture land. Flying here would be an easy uh, adaptation for any American to pilot to make. There's just a few 
uh, differences with maybe some of the jargon with ATC. American Jack Schulte splits his time between New Zealand and Wyoming and keeps a Husky and a 182 in both places. It's more costly to fly here. We have uh, user fees for uh, most of what we need to do in flying. But the beauty of this country uh, uh, and the welcoming nature of the New Zealand people make it all worthwhile. New Zealand requires five hours of mountain flying instruction to convert your U.S. certificate. Matt and Joe McCorn have a great way for you to do that. Starting out from uh, the first day with us, uh, our instructors are, are briefing them and introducing to them to those uh, New Zealand techniques and requirements. And the uh, it's it's basically a mountain flying course at the same time as you're having a great vacation. You can book a vacation with them, fly every day with an experienced instructor in one of their well-equipped 172s, see the sights, experience the stay on a New Zealand sheep station, and get your New Zealand pilot certificate in the process. Every day it was a different two to three hour trip. Landed on a beach, landed on grass strips, and... Uh, I think the way they fly and... and uh... Uh, was was really amazing, you know, with the, the lack of air control that they have. The, there's, there, you're not on radar or anything like that. These Kiwis know how to fly through the mountains pretty good. So. And Melissa, New Zealand faces some of the same problems that we face in the United States with a declining pilot population and an aging fleet, everybody wondering where the next generation of pilots is going to come from. And yet, there are four flying schools that seem to be very busy here at this airport. Wow, it looks like you've had quite an adventure, Tom. And we're not done here yet, Melissa. Stick around because we've got some more flying to do. In fact, we're going to go fly over an active volcano. Thanks so much, Tom. We look forward to that active volcano flight. Last week, we told you about the new Travel Pilot newsletter. It's just one of the new tools AOPA has to help you plan your next great aviation getaway. There's a whole new section on AOPA's website devoted to travel. The first thing you'll find is a brand new airport directory where you can search for airports by the amenities you're looking for. Once you find an airport, you can see local attractions nearby. In the travel section, there's also a collection of AOPA travel stories with destinations shown on an interactive map. After you've planned your trip, you can save money with new discounts on cars and even hotels for AOPA members. There's no better excuse for planning a trip than one of AOPA's fly-ins. The fly-in website has everything you need to know about these great events. The first fly-in of the year is in Missoula, Montana on June 15th and 16th. You can find all the details about all the fly-in out destinations from Missoula. From touring a private air museum to camping in the wilderness, there will be no shortage of adventure. AOPA has a new way to save you money, whether you're flying across the country or taking a trip around the pattern. AOPA has a new credit card, the new World MasterCard through a partnership with Commerce Bank. We have designed the new AOPA credit card to be a lot more than just a pretty picture on a card. It really is every benefit designed around what pilots need, which is earning more cash back on all of their transactions so they can spend their money on aviation. The card offers 4% cash back for select AOPA purchases, 3% for purchases with many AOPA partners, and 2% for certain aviation and auto travel costs like Avgas and ride shares, and 1% for all other purchases. You can find out more information on our website. And AOPA members are automatically entered to win our Sweepstakes Super Cub. It will come ready for adventure on Tundra tires, floats, and skis. And it's almost finished. The airplane has undergone a complete restoration at Baker Air Service in Montana. The team at Baker is working hard and it will be ready to fly in the next few days. Look for the big debut at Sun and Fun next week. And if you're going to Sun and Fun, don't forget to stop by and see us at the AOPA Village. Come see our new tent layout, Hear from new seminar presenters and don't miss the ice cream social and coffee and donuts with AOPA President Mark Baker. Tom and I hope to see you there. And coming up after the break, see what it's like to fly around an active volcano. A mini Super Cub is helping unmanned aircraft and flying the Gimbal Cabri G2 helicopter. Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft. Welcome back. NASA could be flying supersonic airplanes over your house before you know it. They just awarded a contract for a new quieter supersonic aircraft to Lockheed Martin. 
NASA said the goal is to reduce the sound of a sonic boom to a general thrump. The plan is that by 2022, NASA will fly the aircraft over U.S. cities to gather feedback from residents about the new, hopefully quieter, airplane. It's all part of the X-Plane project to introduce supersonic passenger air travel over land. And you don't usually think of NASA as being in the model airplane business, but that's exactly what they're doing with this mini Piper Cub. The NASA Micro Cub, as it's called, is a 60% scale Super Cub with a turboprop engine. It's all in the name of safely integrating drones into the national airspace system. The Micro Cub will be used to test a variety of sea and avoid technology that will be used for unmanned aircraft. And a big honor for Cirrus Aircraft, they won the 2017 Collier Trophy for the Vision Jet. The Collier Trophy is awarded annually by the National Aeronautics Association and recognizes great achievements in aeronautics and astronautics. The NAA says they're recognizing Cirrus for developing the world's first personal single engine jet and implementing the Cirrus airframe parachute system on the airplane. And a little known aviation manufacturer is having great success in the helicopter flight training industry. The Gimbal Cabri G2 is now the best-selling two-seat helicopter in the world. AOPA pilot editor Ian Twombly talked to the chief flight instructor about what makes the Cabri G2 ideal for flight training. You can read more about the Cabri G2 in the upcoming May issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. And finally, let's go back to New Zealand for one last look at this, this amazing land. Tom? One of the great things about flying in a place like New Zealand is some of the really unusual sights and experiences you can have. And for me, it's uh, going to be a first today. We're doing an air-to-air -air photo mission with the Husky here over an active volcano just off the coast from Whakatane, where we are now. We head east from Wakatani across the Bay of Plenty toward White Island, located some 25 nautical miles off the coast of New Zealand's North Island. The volcano last erupted in 2001, but as we approach, we can still see gas venting from the cauldron. As we turn downwind, the signature sulfur smell engulfs the airplanes. Hosting New Zealand's most active volcano, the island has been built up over the past 150,000 years from eruptions, and has been venting gases since before explorer James Cook first saw it in 1769. Hope you enjoyed the tour, because I only got to see the Cessna 172 I was focused on as we circled the island during the photo mission. Regardless, flying in New Zealand is a pure joy. I hope you get to experience it sometime soon. So I said, like an adventure, not every day that you get to fly a general aviation airplane over a steaming volcano. We've had a lot of good adventures down here. It was a wonderful place to fly. What's so impressive is the hospitality. Everybody is very friendly. They strive to say yes rather than no to all of the requests that we've had. And we really appreciate everything that the local pilots have done to make it possible for us to do what we've been able to do for the last couple of weeks. It's been really busy. So we're gonna wrap things up from New Zealand, but hey, next week we'll be coming at you from Sun and Fun in Florida. 
Thanks, Tom. Next time, take me with you. It looks like you had a lot of fun. And that'll do it for us this week. We hope to see you at Sun and Fun next week. Thanks for watching. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com.